When it comes to adding fills and embellishments to your chord melody arrangements and comping, then when you're listening to it, it can sound like you need to have a degree in quantum physics and be a brain surgeon at the same time just to come up with it. And of course, sometimes it is about adding a lot of chords and reharmonizing the song, but it doesn't have to be. I was really baffled by this in the beginning if I listened to Joe Pass or Ted Green and heard all these extra chords and inversions flying left and right, and it was too difficult to figure out and also seemed impossible to play. And of course, some of that is difficult and complicated, but it doesn't all have to be. When you want to add something to a chord melody arrangement, then it has to either be built into the melody and fit around it, or you add it when nothing is happening in the melody. And the first bar of Misty is great to work with because you have a single long note, the major seventh. For the first bar, you can create a fill using pentatonic scale chords, so chords that you construct in the pentatonic scale and move around. The pentatonic scale from the third of the chord is useful for this, because here you have the third, the fifth, the thirteenth, the major seven, and the ninth. All great colors on a major seven chord. If you construct the chords on the middle string set, then you get something like this. Essentially, this is just playing the G minor pentatonic scale as three note chords and everything fits and you've already stated the chord itself on beat one, so that part is taken care of. Later in the video, I'm gonna show you another option with some beautiful open chord voicings. In fact, they're huge voicings, but they sound amazing. On the following 2-5 then, there isn't much room to do something because the melody is moving all of the time. But on the A-flat major 7, you can use a trick that I incorporate quite often, creating a melody by moving a single note inside the chord. And in this case, a chromatic melody moving from the major 7th down to the major 6th. Barry Harris likes this one as well, so it's sort of a bebop sound. What I'm using in this example is that you can freely decide whether you want to use a major 7 or a major 6 chord. And since the first chord is low and only three notes, then it's easy to create some movement inside the chord and actually also to add some rhythm with a motif that's moving around in the bar. Let's try something a bit difficult using the James Bond line cliche on the A flat minor 7, D flat 7, 2, 5. And then later I'll also show you an easier option. This is clearly difficult to play, but the wide range and the static melody really makes it sound great. And line cliches in general work very well on 2-5-1 progressions. The other one, the Stairway to Heaven cliche, is also a great option and is a lot more playable here. As you can see, then the melody is really active here, so there's not really a lot of room to add extra chord runs or embellishments. And this is also true for the next two bars, where the melody is just moving all the time. But then you have the turnaround, which is really just one long note, and therefore a lot more flexible. And here I can show you how I deal with one of the things that I really don't like about using diminished scale chords. Here are quite a few things to work with. I'm not really doing a lot on the D flat 7, but on the C7 also that follows it, I'm using a combination of different voicings together to play a melody. And this is a great, fairly easy way to play something that's really a block harmonized phrase. And as you'll see, it's using how voicings fit together across different types of chord voicings. These are all just C7 altered voicings. First a drop 3 and then two drop 2 voicings. And together I have a melody that forms an A flat major triad, something that also just makes the whole thing work. You can do this with other chords as well, like a B flat 7 13, starting with a drop 3 and then moving to drop 2. And with a melody like this, then it's easy to get it to flow into the next chord. The next thing is a really practical way to play harmonized moving melodies, especially arpeggios. On the F minor 7, you have a melody harmonized in thirds to move on to the B flat 7. The melody is really just a C minor triad, and all the thirds fit perfectly with the F minor 7 chord. But you could also do this moving in a stepwise manner, like this. On the B flat 7, I'm using a solution to my diminished dilemma, and I'm also 
cheating a little bit. So the Dominion scale is incredibly practical because it's symmetrical. You can move things around in minor thirds and that makes it incredibly easy to play chords because then you can just play a chord and then move that up or down a minor third. But the problem with that is also that moving things around like that sounds pretty predictable and boring. So you want to disguise it a little bit. And what I'm doing here is that I have two voicings that fit together. One is a shell voicing and the other is sort of like a dominant 7th flat 5 without the root. I don't really think of them as independent chords, so we can just call them A and B. The first part is playing A and then B, and then I'm moving up a minor third, but to disguise the symmetry, then I'm switching it around and playing B and then A. And I really like this effect, and it keeps things pretty easy to play without being sort of very obviously copy-pasting up and down in minor thirds unless you do it really a lot. Now, I said I was cheating, and that is because if you're playing the song, then you actually need to make space for the pickup for the second A, which I didn't do. But before we get into comping, then I also want to add one more trick to that first tonic chord. Here I'm using a chord run using drop two and four voicings, and these chords have a beautiful open sound, but they're often a little bit difficult to use in a chord melody arrangement. However, for this type of effect, then they're great. And to have a few of them in there next to each other really sounds good. Here I'm moving from E flat major seven to G minor seven, and then up to an inversion of the E flat major seven. To show you how all of this might fit in comping, then I'm going to go over a chorus on Ladybird using these different techniques and tricks. And actually, this is a great strategy for working on things like this figure out how it works in a chord melody arrangement, and then start using it in comping to make it easy to play and really get it into your system. The pentatonic scale that I'm using is, again, from the third of the major seven chord. So in this case, that's an E minor seven pentatonic over C major seven. Let's add some beautiful open voicings and a line cliché. Here you can hear how the drop two and four voicings really fill up the bass nicely. And then the transition into the 2-5 to A flat. That's using the Stairway to Heaven line cliché. Once the song is on A flat major seven, then that becomes a great place to use the inner voice trick, moving from the major seven down to the six. And then I'm using the other line cliché on the A minor 7, D7, also because that's sort of perfect voice leading coming from that A flat major 7 voicing. The final 2 5 showcases the idea with the triad melodies over chords shifting across different chord types. Here it's working both on the 2 chord and on the 5 chord. And the two chord is actually starting with a drop two, but the principle is still the same and it clearly works. When you're working on using things like this in your comping, then you also need to combine it with some interesting syncopated rhythms. And a great place for you to develop that is this video that will help you hear and feel some of the amazing rhythms that the Brazilian grooves are full of.